So welcome to the CIFWISE Open Webinar discussion and demonstration. Uh, what we're going to do today is just walk through a quick company overview of CIFWISE, our history and our highlights, and then uh, we're going to go through a Class 5 and Cloud BVX demonstration and highlights. Um, the presenters for this demonstration are myself, Zachary Caldrick, Regional Sales Manager for UK, Ireland and Nordics, and then we also have on the line who's Daniel Bigici, Operations Engineer. Hi, Dan. Hi, Zach. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing well. Um, and I hope you're good too, Dan. Absolutely. Uh, and Dan's one of our pre-sales operations engineers. So he's going to walk through the demo. So um, I'll begin. So SIPWISE are next generation voice communication platform providers to customers in more than 63 countries, uh, telecoms operators, fixed, mobile operators, ITSPs, internet service providers, and any unified communications or OTT service providers. The company was founded in 2008 in Vienna, Austria, and that's where our headquarters is. And it was founded by three main shareholders who are listed here. It was started as a company who focus on design, development and integration of next generation VoIP communications platforms and was recruited or requested by UPC Cablecom or Liberty Global to provide state of the art class 5 and class 4 soft switch solutions which would then service their small to medium enterprise customers with uh, innovative solutions like Cloud PBX and so on. We now have grown to have over 40 staff, and as I mentioned, we have 60 references in over 23 countries, I think that's over 25 now, on three different continents, and over 5 million registered lines, so registered subscribers using our platforms. As you can see from the below, these are some of our customers. Um, if you'd like any more information, please do contact us. Okay, our main products are our SIPWISE Class 5 soft switch, which is the building block for all of our solutions. And then we also offer a Cloud PBX or Hosted PBX module, Class 4 solutions for interconnecting other carriers, uh, such as via legacy methods through the PSTN, so ICN or SS7, and then session border controllers. And then we also offer our WebRTC engine <coughs> which we'll touch on briefly, but will be the focus of another webinar coming shortly. As you can see from this, this is the bit about how our architecture works. We have our SIPWISE Class 5, which interfaces with the telco or mobile operators, OSS, BSS, and network management systems. And then that integrates with our Class 4 WebRTC engine modules, SIP phone modules, and Cloud PBX modules. This is our core building block, as I mentioned. It provides SIP, XMPP, and WebRTC signaling and media interfaces, and enables peering, relays, and voice and video bridges, as well as a powerful REST API to interconnect with your existing OSS and BSS billing applications or provisioning applications. The SIPWISE Class 5, or platforms, are provided on two different hardware modules. We won't go into too much detail on that, they are SIP Provider Pro and our SIP Carrier, each highly scalable and provided with resilient architecture. As you can see from this, they have unlimited numbers of SIP peerings or Class 4 peerings, and each has different levels of numbers of, of subscriber basis, concurrent calls, and busy hour call attempts. Our products are built based on versatile modules for call routing, B2B UA functionality. They include pre and post paid billing, monitoring and reporting, and then customer web interfaces designed at each tier. Because they're multi tiered and multi tenanted, that means that you have admin interfaces, reseller interfaces, which are all white labelable, and then each customer can log into their platform. We've also IMS proofed and worked out where we fit within the IMS architecture. That would be an application as an application server, which integrates into the IMS core 
for the ISC interface for the CFDS and the SH interface for provisioning to the HSS or HLR. Our class four platform is built through a technology partnership with Dialogic, uh, supports E1, STM1, STM1, or sorry, T1 or SIGTRAN interfaces, and helps enable fixed and mobile convergence. One of the products we're going to go into detail is on during the demonstration as well as our cloud PBX. This enables cost efficient PBX functionality or hosted PBX functionality on the SIPWISE class five including all the standard features and is perfect to, for small to medium enterprises looking to offer or move to the IP based lessening world away from uh, traditional more expensive legacy services but without having to do a major integration with new IPBX in, in their office or may not be required for a small number of users. We integrate with a wide range of business phones or standard CPEs like Cisco, Yearlink, SNOM, Polycom and Panasonic and we provide all the standard features on these CPEs that you could expect like music on hold, call queuing, busy lamp field etc. Our SIP phone is a standard <coughs> dialer which can use any kind of internet connection on a mobile device, Wi-Fi, 3G, LTE and can be supported on laptops as well as smartphones. Typically it's used on smartphones like Android or iOS and it's a white labelable platform so it can be provided to you with your light labelling and then you can even offer your resellers the option to have a white label dialer as well. Finally our WebRTC engine is a cutting edge API which allows you to integrate real time communication and cloud based services. It was developed in partnership with T-Labs or Deutsche Telekom Labs. Um, and provide simple APIs to create advanced applications such as uh, video conferencing, remote diagnosis tools and other such applications for corporate clients. It's aimed at service providers and system integrators to offer tailored communication and collaboration services to their clients and it easily fits into existing if infrastructures using our WebRTC engine making it straightforward and inexpensive. This is a brief coverage map of where we, we have clients and subscribers. As you can see, having started in Central Europe, we've sort of branched out from there. But over the next two years, our aim is to have clients in every continent across the globe and have deployed and grown significantly within our existing user base. That was a brief presentation from me. I'll now hand you over to Dan, and Dan will walk through the SIP Class 5 demo, SIP Wise Class 5 and Cloud PBX demonstration. So, Dan, I'm just going to change the presenter over to yourself. Bear with me. Yes. Okay. Um, you should have the presenter abilities now. Okay. Okay, has that come across to you? Yes, Perfect. you should be able to see the admin sign in screen. I can, yes, it's come up perfectly clear on my system. Okay, so we'll have a demo, a short demo about uh, our uh, class 5 and uh, CPBX uh, capabilities. Uh, this would be the Pro platform, CPWISE uh, Pro, uh, the one unit uh, Dell system that uh, has our software installed and support up to 50,000 uh, SIP registered users. Uh, the platform is uh, taking care of the SIP signaling, the media relay uh, or media bypass, uh, the WebRTC to SIP interconnection for uh, WebRTC solutions and billing and invoicing. I'll go through both type of subscribers, uh, the residential subscribers and the Cloud PBX subscribers, and I'll demonstrate uh, a little bit of uh, the features, the telephony features, like uh, voice calling, fax, conference calling, etc. 
So I'll log in into the platform through the web interface with the administrator account. The platform has another interface to uh, be accessed directly through SSH um, in the command line interface. And there's a third uh, interface that uh, we can use to configure the platform, and that interface is the REST API. In the documentation tab of the platform, we have the API tab. I'm going to open it. And this is our entire uh, REST API documentation, and that will help the provider to integrate our server with his uh, OSS BSS infrastructure. For example, if he will ever need to provision subscribers in the future through his OSS BSS server, they will need to use this type of syntax in the REST API. For example, create a new subscriber. We have the post request and the mandatory fields of the request for a subscriber. And I'm going to showcase um, a few subscriber creation examples when we get to the Cloud PBX uh, module. So this is just the documentation for the REST API interface. Like I said, this would be the third interface to configure the platform. In our um, tab, we have another documentation, which is the operation manual of the platform. We are running the version 4.3.1 right now. And this documentation uh, helps the operation uh, team of the customer to configure the platform from A to Z. We have everything in the web interface accessible for the administrator. I am logged in as, a, as the administrator. The platform supports different type of uh, users. Uh, the default one is the administrator, which has all the policies set to one. Obviously, it has the most rights on the platform. And there are uh, other users of the platform which are the administrators of their resellers. And a reseller is a smaller ITSP, Internet Telephony Service Provider, that would like to rent capacity uh, on our soft switch. And they get assigned a billing uh, profile with zones and rates, and they can manage their own um, customers and SIP domains and subscribers. We create login usernames for them and give them access to the platform uh, through the REST API and the web interface to configure their own accounts. So if I click on home page, I have an overview of the system, which is the dashboard. Uh, we have a first system status where we can view some statistics about the system, like CPU, some disk statistics, uh, interfaces. The most uh, used interface is Ethernet 0. Ethernet 1 is the interface between the uh, standby server. And we can see all kinds of parameters for the interfaces up to a 12-month history. You can see the server was started in March 2016. There are uh, another tab, which is the resellers. Like I said, the resellers are smaller ITSP providers that would like to rent capacity on our soft switch. I'm going to go later into detail. And the billing profiles. Billing profiles can uh, be uh, assigned to resellers and can also be assigned to customers of these resellers. Each reseller crea can create two types of customers. 
and it can build differently uh, based on uh, the zones and the fees that he wants to set up for his customers. And the fourth step, the most important, is the peerings. These are SIP trunks uh, configured with other uh, providers around the world, and I'm going to go through uh, each of them one by one. These settings are here, resellers, billing, and peers. Peers is the only setting available just to uh, administrators of the platform. So if we go here and we see administrators, right now it's just me, the administrator, with full access. Everybody else has just limited access to their own reseller accounts. We can create an additional administrator platform, uh, uh, additional administrator user account for uh, one of my colleagues to help me uh, administrate the platform and record changes based on user. In the monitoring and statistics tab, we have an additional SIP call flows. It's a nice little tool that allows me to see the call flows in the system. I can see 50 items per page with a history of two weeks by default. It can be increased, but it will uh, consume a little bit of capacity on the server. For example, I can see that there was a call here. If I want to check the signaling, I can easily click on it. I can analyze Every message, for example, let's say the second message, I click on it, and it opens, uh, and I can check all the headers of the SIP invite message. Who is calling, from where, what IPs, what kind of codec it supports, everything I want to see. The same I can, uh, another feature is to download this um, signaling trace. As a pickup file, I can save it on my desktop, and I can email it to CPY support engineer for analysis if I need his help. It's a very nice little tool. We can uh, enable it by default, or you can have it uh, there. You can have it disabled. Another tab is call routing verification. It's another tool that will help us configure the system. I want to see a simulation of a call. This is not going to be a call, but just a simulation to see how the dialing plan will be executed. So I have a caller number, which is one of my subscribers, or 0333123456. And let's say I want to call in US uh, 001-800-9898-98. It gives me a small log of the signaling processing by the platform. And at the end, it will say it match a peer with this IP and with this ID which means the call will be sent to this peer. If I look in my peering settings, go to settings, peers, peerings, here I can see that I have configured a peer with this IP address. If I click on details, I can see the IP address of the provider and some callee prefix rules that are uh, considered to route call store at this peer. Another peerings, like I said, we can create an unlimited uh, number of peering groups with uh, different providers around the world. I have created uh, only four right now. It's very easy to create. We just put the name and the description then in details, we can add as many SIP servers as the provider wants to, to give us. 
just put the IP addresses here, create peering server, the name, the IP address, and save. Rules to be considered for peerings, very easy to create. We just put the callee prefix, callee pattern, a little bit of description if necessary, save, and then the dialing plan towards a specific operator around the world, it's set up. Everything else except peerings is available for the resellers. And I'm going to log out before I'm going to show you the resellers and the administrators. So I have another reseller created on top of the default one. The system comes with only one default reseller and I don't want to use it. I'm using a special reseller for, for this demo called Okichi. So this reseller has a username and password. It's, it is administrator, so it's Dan Bogichi. So I'm going to log in with this reseller to show how customers can be assigned to the system. One little uh, information we need to sh know before is that each reseller has his own SIP domain. So the platform general domain is ngcpdemo.zipwise.com. For my reseller, I have set up dan.ngcpdemo.zipwise.com as my SIP domain. As you can see, I can see all the SIP domains of all the resellers because I am the administrator right now. So let's log out and log back in as Dan Bogici. And now the resellers, the resellers tab is gone. I cannot configure resellers, only the administrator has the right to do that. And I can still see the domains, but I can only see domains pertaining to my reseller. I can create an additional domain for myself if I need one and I can see the administrators which is myself I can add another operator for uh, uh, help on configuring the platform we can configure the platform uh, simultaneously that's another good feature um, the domains like I said and billing here I can set up the billing profiles for my customers. I have two types of customers I can create, residentials and Cloud PBX type. And for residentials, I have a profile and I can see the profile here. I have created just two fees uh, for worldwide and for USA. Let's see for worldwide what is uh, that I'm charging. I'm charging uh, one cent per second. The initial interval is the 60 seconds, and after that, following interval is another 60 seconds. So I'm just keeping it uh, at uh, charging uh, 60 seconds per minute. I can put a an additional of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 digits for a different type of rating and click Save. This billing fee can be downloaded as a CSV file. I'm going to save it. If I open the CSV file, I can see that at some point I have added a very long fee. I'm going to cut it down, just make it easier for the billing process to process. I'm going to save. Desktop, save. 
and now I can upload the fees back. Much easier to change the fees like that. Pinning fees. Purge the existing to override the fees. And now the billing fee, the billing profile of the residential subscribers, it's renewed. I can set up some off-peak times. And the system, the billing system is quite flexible. I have an invoice tab. At the end, I can generate some invoices for the customers. And this is how an invoice would look like your monthly statement, customer, customer number, then a list of detailed records of the calls, and a summary of the invoice with the total in dollars, total price in dollars. And all of so this can be white label, labelable on the invoice and on the administrator dashboards and so on to your resellers' uh, yes, requirements as well, can't it, Dan? Yes, absolutely. Every reseller can introduce his own logo and his own information on the invoices. It's a very easy process. Um, and as a reseller, I have created two customers. Like I said, one is the residential customer. In our platform, this means a basic SIP subscriber account. If I click details, I can see that this customer can have SIP subscribers with normal telephony numbers. In this house, we have two subscribers, just uh, uh, but they can use four or five phones, up to ten phones in the house, if it's a big house. Uh, they can register. If I click on one of the numbers, I can see on details the registration information that he needs to put in his SIP phone. It's uh, the SIP URI and the domain and the password as well as the web uh, credentials. The subscriber can log in into the ngcpdemo.sipwise.com with this web username and this password. So he can see a call history. He can have the option of sending web to fax. And he can set up his call forwarding features. Uh, and I'll showcase uh, this later. Every subscriber on the platform, no matter what type, residential or cloud TBX, has this feature. This subscriber can have set up voicemail. Me as the reseller administrator, administrator I can set up permanent registrations for uh, different type of phones with the uh, set six IPs. Or if the subscriber registers himself from his laptop, with a soft phone or from another fixed phone around the world. Uh, like I said, we support major, all major type of uh, VoIP fixed phones, Panasonic, Cisco, Yaling, etc. I could see his device here. And then if he is complaining that there's some problems, I can see the SIP dialogs and I can export it save it and send it to SIPWISE for troubleshooting. So basic functionality for the SIP residential subscribers is just uh, voice calling, basic telephony features like web to fax, fax to mail, call forwarding, all types of call forwarding, including uh, call forwarding to conference and to voicemail. So basically, you as an operator can actually sell bundles of numbers uh, that can be used just as call uh, conferencing numbers with a pin and uh, a capacity of 50 people in the conference. By default, we can increase that, but uh, it takes special configuration. 
And now I'm going to present functionalities for the Cloud TBX account. Let's say uh, Dan Bogici is a reseller, is a small operator in the op in the town of Vienna. Wants to sell Cloud PBX account accounts, and we have a customer as a law firm or a school or or as a university, and we want, want to give them a maximum of 100 extensions. I can create a Cloud PBX account. And I can create subscribers, extensions, PBX groups, which are queues like sales, marketing, uh, customer support, etc. I can create PBX devices, which means I can pre-provision Cisco, Yearlink, Panasonic, all type of uh, all types of uh, fixed phones. And I can set up a billing profile for this particular customer in the billing schedule here in the billing tab and I can assign it to charge them whatever rates I want. And I can show you how the configuration is set up. We have set up 16 uh, extensions so far out of 100, which is maximum. The most important number is the pilot number, which is the entry number in the PBX. If somebody wants to call this law firm, they have to dial Four zero three three one two three four five six. That that is their primary number. We have configured additional two alias numbers, and of course, this subscriber has credentials to register a phone, soft phone, VoIP phone, whatever SIP client, and as well he can see his. Uh, call history and he can set up his telephony services over the web interface. Everything else is just like any other normal residential subscriber. The other subscribers which are extensions are a little bit more special because on top of the number that they have, on top of the pilot number, they also have additional two digit extension numbers. For example, the CTO has 4033123456 plus 33 as extension. It can be dialed from outside directly by this primary number, or somebody can dial the pilot number, listen to the IVR, and then enter the extension 33. Here I can see in the register device there is no phone or SIP client registered right now. I had some in the past. I can see there is a call history and some capture dialogues, even for today. I can see there was some activity for this subscriber. But right now he shut down his phone. Every time we configure a Cloud PBX account, we configure the subscribers, but we also have the capacity to configure professional queues. In this case, I have configured sales, marketing, support, accounting, and back office. Uh, each queue has an extension. Sales is extension 02. And again, it can be accessed by dialing the pilot number and followed by 02 as extension. In this sales queue, there are some uh, regular extensions, and we can see them when we press details. Uh, and this extension can ring parallel simultaneously, or they can ring one by one. And we can change this policy depending on whatever the customer wants. So let's take sales, for example, and see who is in the sales queue. Click on group members. And we can see there's the CTO is also in the sales, plus other extensions, extension 13, extension 51. <clears throat> and to assign this um, type of uh, cues to the pilot subscriber, 
If we click on the pilot subscriber details preferences and we choose the auto attendance slot, we can see that we set slot two is for sales. We have slot one for marketing. We have slot zero uh, directly forwarded to the CTO and some other slots. Now on call forward unconditional, we have to set up the auto attendant to be active. So then when somebody dials the number of the pilot subscriber, he will be prompt with a message in English like, please press zero two for sales, zero one for whatever, marketing, and so on and so forth. We have it here, it's all set up, no need to change it. The PBX devices feature, it allows me to auto provision phones and I'll have an example for uh, this demo with yelling. <clears throat> Our platform supports all type of uh, models and brands. Cisco, Panasonic, yelling, Innova phone, and audio codes. And in the future, we'll probably probably be supporting Snome and different other brands. So I'll choose this phone, Yelling CPT 22P. This is how it looks like. This phone really exists on my desktop. It is set up to factory defaults right now. I can access it by the web interface. I can see the IP address, the MAC address, which I need. I'm gonna put it right here. Station name, MAC address and I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to put up, this as a main CTO phone. We're going to assign the extension of the CTO on line one, 33, as private. And I'll put on line three, maybe just a sales group. I'll set it up for BLF, Easy Land Field and click save. Now at this moment, this phone is already pre-provisioned in our platform. I am not going to put any username and password in the phone manually. All I'm going to do is just reboot the phone. I can ask the IT operator in the in the office there to reboot, reboot the, phone, the phone or I can do it remotely if I have access like I do right now, I have access through the web interface. I'm just rebooting the device and it will take two minutes to download the configuration from our server, send the register message and be able to receive calls in the name of the CTO and in the name of the sales queue. I am also logged in on the server with uh, SSH uh, access in the command line interface. And there is a small little tool we use to check up the SIP traffic live. So I'm going to try to see when the register message comes for the CTO. <coughs> In the meantime, I'm going to log off as one of the administrator in the system. I am Dan Bogici, reseller administrator. And I'm going to log in as a normal subscriber. The administrator is using the web interface on port 1443, so I have deleted that. A normal HTTPS port 443 is reserved for the subscribers. And I'll just log in as a CTO subscriber to show you what a user sees in the platform, a normal 
extension user for the Cloud PBX customers, or a residential subscriber. You can see his call list. If I click on call list, I can have 50 items per page and multiple pages. Right now, I only have 17 entries in my history. I can see who is the caller, who is the colleague, and the duration of the call. And then I can compare it at the end of the month with uh, the bill that I received from the reseller, just in case. You know, it's a nice feature to have for customers. I can see my voicemail. I have no voicemail right now. I can see my registered devices. The phone didn't reboot yet, so I don't see it. Okay. I can see uh, options for me to reset the password, my SIP password. And I can send a fax directly from this interface. And I can see the history of the fax that I tried to see to send and if they were successful or failed. Uh, this is a demo platform. It's not actually connected to uh, the outside SIP world. The peers, peers that I have are just fake peers. They're not going to process any fax or SIP calls. So basically, this is what the subscriber will see. And he can set up call forwarding here in his preference. can set up call blocking, internals, some different type of uh, parameters that can be set up on the subscriber level. If I don't know what this means, I just click on the question mark next to it, and the small uh, description of the parameter appears. Ignore the call forward from a cloud PBX subscriber when it is called within a Han group. Call blockings, block mode for inbound calls, theme to bypass outbound block lists. We have all kinds of features for subscribers. So I'm going to log off as a subscriber. Log out and log back in as the administrator of the platform. One, four, four, three. Administrator. <clears throat> and as administrator, I can see everything in the platform. So I'm going to Dan Bogici reseller details. I want to see if the phone is up and running. I need to go to customers. Here it is. Cloud PBX details and subscribers. I'm going to check the CTO subscriber details and the registered devices. And I can see that the phone is registered right now. It is live. It should be able to receive calls. If I can check my logs in the server, you can see that a registered message was sent here by CTO123. I can click on the uh, message, and I can see that it was sent by the user agent yelling, SIP 20, T22P, so everything looks fine. So I'll go back here, and I'm going to make a call just to see if it's possible. I'm going to register another extension, extension test 63. 
we can see that we got another message here. This one, boom, it's registered. So I'm going to dial 33 on the number of the CTO. And I can see call setup. It's been rejected. Do request timeout. You can see that the phone was not picked up here in this message. So the call was rejected. Of course, I am not in the office where the phone is, so nobody picked up there. So if I go to the phone, back, let's look at the extension 63. Test 63, details. Capture dialogues. And I can see the invite. I can see that the phone was refused with 408 message. Good. Now, another feature that we have in the platform, like I said, is the documentation ready to be accessed directly on the web interface, both on REST API and full operations manual. And REST API uh, provisioning. So I'm going to ex exit from the SN Grab tool, and I'm going to try to provision additional extensions for Cloud PBX account through the REST API interface. So I'll log in into the command line and issue some OSS BSS simulated commands from a third party server. So let's go back here. We can see in the subscribers that right now we only have a few of them. These are their extensions. And the last one is Gene, extension 72. So I'll just take really quick the REST API command. And I'm going to provision additional three or four extensions by a click of the mouse. So this is the command that uh, the OSS PSS third party server will send to Sipwise soft switch. And this is the syntax. Like I said in documentation, it's explained. Post is the main command, the main REST API command. And these are the mandatory parameters. You can see I'm going to create the username Alex. Password, extension 71, and uh, the groups where it would be assigned. I think one of them is sales, and the other two I don't remember. Okay, I'm going to. I'm not going to create Gene because Gene is already created. So let's just create Alex first. Copy, paste, enter. And let's create a few more. Copy. And it's not working because the password has changed in the meantime. I forgot. So I'm going to put another password. Okay. 
Yeah. All right, so let's just create these two. Mike and Gene seventy seven. Right, good. So we got created, created, and now we can check by refreshing the page. We can see that we have G72 and Mike79 already created. If we click on details, we can see their username and password. And we can check to see and what other queues they belong to. So they're both in sales, marketing, and support. So this is pretty much the web demonstration, the web demo that we have for today. Zach, I'll get it back to you for the final words. Thank you, Dan. So um, anybody watching this uh, demonstration and company overview, uh, if you'd like to contact us, please do reach out through the company website or pick up the email addresses at the beginning of the uh, presentation. And uh, thank you for watching and listening. Goodbye.